name is Lisa. I'm 26 years old. I have two kids, ages four and three, who attend daycare. I'm currently, I'm working part-time at my uncle's company until my children grow up. My husband, who recently received a promotion to supervisor at the supermarket where he works, is 32 years old. When he got the promotion, he was shyly happy, saying with a smile during dinner, it somehow reminds me of when I received my first job offer. I think our children, even though they didn't understand what was going on, seemed happy to see their parents having a cheerful conversation. It seemed like our family time was wrapped in happiness. Today, the promotion was officially announced, so I splurged a bit and bought some higher quality meat than my husband likes in celebration and made a delicious meal while waiting for him to come home. However, when he came home, his facial expression seemed different. I went to the door with our kids as usual and said, welcome home, but he didn't respond with his usual, I'm home, and a smile. Our kids and I were puzzled, but I thought he might be tired, so I told him dinner was ready without making a big deal about it. While I was setting the table, my husband, who usually changes clothes and cheerfully comes straight to the dining table asking, what's for dinner tonight, sat at the table with a serious expression. And then looking at the food laid out on the table, he said, hey, hey, you, is this supposed to be my celebratory meal? Are costs, Ash Larry, all this? I couldn't believe my ears. That's because he's never called me you before. Our kids didn't know how to respond to this unfamiliar version of their father and fell silent. Feeling the mood worsen, my husband continued to say things like, you don't realize how amazing I am. I worked hard to become a supervisor. Do you understand seemingly upset that I didn't seem to respect him enough? I didn't want the celebration to turn sour, and more importantly, I didn't want our children to look anxious, so I tried to appease my husband. I'm sorry. Thank you for always working so hard for us. We always appreciate it. I told him he seemed a bit better after I said that, so throughout the meal, I tried to sprinkle words of appreciation and gratitude into our conversation. As he kept saying things like this meal, isn't enough for my celebration. Bruce Bile was somebody had taught Spiritus. I was disappointed because I had splurged on expensive meat that we don't usually buy and made dishes that my husband likes, thinking it would make him happy. And made dishes that my husband likes, thinking it would make him happy. But if he thinks the meal is modest, then I must not have met his expectations. I thought to myself and tried to calm down. I figured his unusual behavior was due to being tired from his first day as a supervisor and hoped he would be back to his normal self the next day. After the meal, I started cleaning up, relieved to see my husband talking to our children on the couch as usual. Usually, I can hear the three of them laughing, but it was very quiet, so I stopped what I was doing and listened to their conversation. I was stunned to hear what they were talking about. If you want to be like daddy, you have to study a lot. <laughs> Go out, Chapel, in the future if you end up like mommy who doesn't study. All right. What kind of thing is that to say to the children? I asked him, but he responded angrily. It's not wrong. That's bad about it. It's flip, 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 We'd never have fight before, so I was at a loss for words. When I stayed silent, he sneered and said, I say you can't answer, can you? Out here, gosh, you could have survived without me, could you? You don't want to live off of our children, do you? I asked him, what's gotten into you today? You're acting strange. You're not the type to say things like this, are you? Actually, but my husband just replied. I'm just saying what I've been thinking. I hate that you think you're on the same level as me. He made it sound as if the man I knew until yesterday wasn't his real self, but rather a facade he had been putting on. It was only then that I realized the man standing before me was my husband's true self. I was filled with an emotion I had never felt before, a mix of anxiety, sadness, and frustration at this shocking reality. At that moment, our eldest son, who is four, said to me, Mommy works a lot. What's more impressive, your part-time working mom or your dad, the big shot at his company? Kais, my husband scoffed at our son's silence, saying, Ours is Rush silence, saying, I can't stand even at the age of four. You must have inherited your mom's brains as well as her looks. To distract the children from the situation, 
I suggested with a smile. Shall we take a bath together? Usually, it was my husband who bathed kids, but they were thrilled to take a bath with me instead. Our eldest son, who usually insisted that I help him undress. Our eldest son, who usually insisted that I help him undress, quickly started to take off his clothes on his own, and our three-year-old daughter followed suit, trying her best to undress herself. After helping her a little, her clothes came off and I praised her with a smile, saying, well done. She looked very pleased with herself. Seeing the children like this was so healing that I almost forgot about the incident earlier. While we were in the tub chatting about what happened at daycare, my husband came into the changing room and shouted through the bathroom door, you're being too loud. And why are you taking a bath before me? The children clung to me in fear. As my husband grumbled his way back to the living room, our son said with a worried look, Daddy is mean today. I hugged my daughter, who seemed on the verge of tears, and said, Daddy is just tired and grumpy today. He'll be his usual self tomorrow. After we got out of the bath and prepared for bed, we went to the children's bedroom earlier than usual. We spoke in hushed voices as not to provoke my husband. The children seemed to find this fun. It's, it's like we're having a secret conversation. They said, talking more than usual in their little whispers. They even tried to suppress their laughter, perhaps fearing that my husband might get angry. But the more they tried not to laugh, the more they seemed to want to, and they spent the entire time chatting and laughing happily, Just watching the children like this. I felt truly happy. Having laughed themselves tired, the children fell asleep earlier than usual. I then headed for the living room where my husband was. My husband was looking at his smartphone, his hand covering his mouth, his face slightly red as if he was embarrassed. I felt a bit off, but more importantly, we needed to discuss my husband's behavior earlier today. You've been acting really strange today, I told him. Even the kids are getting worried. He replied, what's so weird about me? If anything, you're the strange one. Aren't you supposed to be respected by your kids? Do you want them to turn out like you? He didn't feel guilty at all even going so far as to belittle me. I told him, I've not led a life that deserves being looked down upon. But, but he just kept insisting, your way of thinking is wrong, and we couldn't have a proper conversation. Then I said, we're doing things my way from now on. I'm going to change our lives. When I asked him what he meant, he suggested that the family should always put him first, take a step back, and create an environment where he can relax. I told him, that's too different from how we've been doing things, the kids will be confused. Please stop. But it seems like he heard about the family life of a department head. He respects and thought that my and the kids' attitudes towards him at home were wrong. It seems he got some words of encouragement from the department head when he got promoted and had a little chat. But too, in that conversation, the department head had said, the reason I was able to become a department head a bit earlier than my peers is all thanks to my wife. So my husband asked the department head about his wife and family. The department head's wife doesn't let him do anything, allowing him to focus solely on his work. This hasn't changed even after their child was born, and she manages all the housework and childcare perfectly. Their child apparently wants to be just like their father too. Hearing this, my husband seemed to think that the reason his promotion came later than his peers was my fault. He now believes that if he makes our family like the department head's family, he can catch up with his peers and get promoted earlier. I didn't say it out loud, but I thought to myself that it wasn't my fault, but rather, his work wasn't being appreciated. I felt so drained all of a sudden. As I was heading to the bedroom to sleep, my husband stopped me. At least a moment, I got promoted. I've been admired more than ever by the part-timers and temps. As soon as I became a supervisor, my phone never stops buzzing. He said a hint of blush on his face. I had my doubts about what he said, but I was too exhausted. So I just said, sure, sure, and went to the kids' room. I got into the kids' bed and decided to sleep there. The next morning, I was disappointed to find that yesterday wasn't a dream. When our son casually said, good morning to my husband, he suddenly yelled, it's good morning, sir, to your father. Our daughter, startled and scared, burst into tears, and our son, holding back his tears, said, gee, good morning, sir. I should be grateful to be with someone like me due to a mix of anger and sadness. Amr Wissen. In front of the crying children, our eldest son, who had been holding back his tears as he had never seen such a quarrel before, also started crying. I couldn't help but join them in crying due to a mix of anger and sadness. 
Seeing this, my husband exclaimed, What a depressing start to the morning, and left for work without eating his breakfast. As I was comforting the crying children, our eldest son caressed my head and told me, Don't cry, Mom. Swiping away my tears, I hugged the children tightly and assured them with a smile, I won't cry anymore. Then I prepared for my work and got the kids ready for daycare before heading out. Fix when I was with the children, I could act cheerfully, but when I was alone, I felt incredibly down. I can't help but think about how to restore our family to its previous state of happiness. The company I work for is a consulting firm run by my uncle. My uncle is my mother's brother. Since he and his wife never had children, they've always doted on me since I was young, like a second set of parents. On his recommendation, I obtained the necessary certification to work as an art consultant, and now I work at his company. After I gave birth to my children, they've allowed me to work shorter hours. When my uncle runs the consulting firm, my aunt runs a real estate agency, our apartment is rented from her real estate company. When I arrived at work, my uncle noticed my tear-streaked face and expressed his concerns. I brushed it off with a smile, saying, I just couldn't help but cry when I saw the kids off to daycare, but I think my uncle saw through me. He kindly told me, don't hesitate, don't talk to me if you need anything, while patting my head. Once again, I held back my tears and got on with my work. After finishing work at 3 p.m., I bid farewell to my colleagues who were still working and went to pick up my children from daycare. We then headed to the supermarket for groceries. This supermarket is also where my husband works. I am familiar with the staff, so I greet them as I shop. As a part-time worker who usually chats with me congratulated me on my husband's promotion to supervisor. I responded, thank you. It's all thanks to all of you. Please continue to support my husband. Usually, this part-time worker would engage in some small talk. Just as she was about to say something, my husband, who happened to be in the store, caught her attention and she quickly returned to her duties. My husband told me, don't interfere with the part-timer's work. Well, finish your shopping and go home. I thought I might have indeed disturbed her work, so I simply replied, all right, and started shopping, pulling along our child's hand. After finishing shopping and waiting in line for checkout, I saw my husband talking to a young female part-timer at a distance that seemed too close for just work-related conversation. I pushed it off and continued with the checkout when my daughter went over to my husband and the part-timer. My husband shooed her away with a dismissive hand gesture. She returned to me with a saddened expression. As I looked at my husband, he and the part-timer went into the back of the store through a door. My woman's intuition was at work and I had a bad feeling. But more than that, my mind was filled with the question of how I could restore my family to its previous happy state. After doing the shopping, I got home, let the kids play, and pondered while preparing dinner, but no good ideas came to mind. I thought about consulting my uncle, but I decided to think more about it because it's about my own family. I told myself that there must be a way out. I had dinner ready by the usual time my husband gets home, but no matter how long I waited, he didn't come back. I thought I would just get scolded if I called him, so I waited for him to come home without calling. I ate dinner with the kids first, took a bath together, and finally, when the kids were asleep in their bedroom, my husband came home. His working hours are from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and the store closes at 8 p.m. I would thought he had to work overtime, so I didn't ask anything and just reheated dinner. However, my husband said, I don't need dinner today. Have I any eaten at 3 or... <laughs> but was silently turned off the stove and cleaned up. Ayn. When I glanced at my husband, he seemed to be exchanging messages with someone on his smartphone. He noticed my gaze and began to make excuses even though I didn't ask, saying listening to the employee's concerns is also part of a supervisor's job. At that moment, I felt my woman's intuition was getting closer to the truth. Something's fishy, I thought. I felt like my husband was no longer the man I loved, and I was overcome with sadness. My heart ached sharply, my heart rate quickened, and I felt constricted. I can't restore my happy family by myself. As my suspicion that my husband may have a woman he likes approaches certainty, my goal of restoring a happy family seems to be drifting away. My legs started trembling, so I said goodnight to my husband and decided to sleep in the kids' bedroom again. But I couldn't sleep, and morning came. The kids remembered what happened yesterday morning and said, 
Good morning, politely to their father. I saw my husband off to work after breakfast, saying, have a good day. During the sleepless night, I was thinking about how to restore my family. I needed to do that. I concluded that I must bring back my husband's feelings towards the family, so I decided to study cooking more and work harder on housework to win back his feelings. However, my husband started coming home late almost every day and stopped eating at home. I thought I should not provoke him now and did not discuss it with my husband. No, maybe I was scared to find out that my husband's feelings were no longer with me and I might not want to hear harsh words from my husband. So, I started to avoid conversation as much as possible. One day, when I was sleeping in the kids' bedroom as usual, I heard a conversation in the living room as if my husband was talking to someone. Even though I thought eavesdropping was bad, I quietly approached the living room door and listened to the conversation through the door. Okay, I stop and eat to the west. Here's the arrest done. But you won't find out. My wife is so oblivious on me, but she I realize that the woman my husband is thinking about now is Mary. I really love you, Kai Frice brick opt him. Mary's the set I the shredded statue. I was listening very calmly, as if I had given up on winning back my husband's feelings. I can't give up my family for your sake. I am mad, says Spider Lisa Stwee. Chirk, just when these words came out of my husband's mouth, my mind went blank. I flung open the door and confronted my husband. What do you mean by giving up your family? Are you saying you'll abandon not only me, but also our children? I yelled at him. My husband quickly hung up the phone, his face slightly flustered, but the next moment he had a defiant attitude. So I'd have a hard time with two kids if we divorced. What are you talking about? There's no way I can accept that. It's not a parent's place to talk about abandoning their children. I couldn't hold back any longer, even though I was worried about waking up the kids. I couldn't stay calm and I raised my voice to my husband. My husband, who had never seen me argue back so much, was taken aback, but he took a deep breath and shouted back at me. Oh, you think you are working part-time? But you're so bitter, stop leeching off me. Job you deaf to me. The next moment, our eldest son went up to my husband and cried out, I hate you, and I found that's mere friction. My husband had been said to our eldest son, you guys are the ones who should leave. Oh. I stood in front of our son and said, don't be so harsh on the kids. I thought our son would cry even more, but he was glaring at my husband with an angry face. My husband took out an envelope, likely from the government office, from his bag and handed it to me with a smirk. Inside the envelope was a divorce paper. Do you guys get out? I'll give you two days. Are you out by then? Saying that, my husband packed his things and left in the car. I hugged our eldest son and said, thank you for standing up for mom. Thank to which she replied, I hate anyone who bullies mom, and began to cry. When I went into the bedroom where our son and daughter were, our daughter jumped out of the bed, hugged me, and started trembling as she cried. I told my children, shall we live somewhere without daddy? Just the three of us. Without any hesitation, the kids said, we don't want this scary place. We don't need that. Their decision as little kids might change someday. However, living with someone who can easily say that he will abandon his children for the woman he loves will never lead to the happiness of the children. Ek, on the contrary, it might hurt the children physically and mentally. I thought the first priority was to separate the children from my husband as soon as possible. So even though it was late at night, I called my parents and told them everything that had happened. My parents told me to come home right away but I declined because it would take two hours to get there from here. The reason was that I really enjoyed the job at my uncle's company and I thought it would not be good for the children to change their environment completely. Moreover, they have a lot of friends at the daycare center and they look forward to going there every day, so I couldn't choose to go back to my parents' house right away. I consulted with my uncle and told him that I was planning to rent an apartment from my aunt's real estate company. My parents were worried, but they said they would come here first thing tomorrow and ask my uncle and aunt together. The following day, my parents came to my uncle's company, pleaded with him on my behalf, and my aunt was present too. They promised to rent me a room. Afterwards, since I was quite busy with work, I asked my parents to handle the moving preparations and picking up the kids from daycare. 
busy I had things to do, so I informed my parents I'd be back late and went to work. Next when my shift ended, I went to the supermarket where my husband works and informed him that I agreed to the divorce and once that was done, I would go to the county clerk's office to submit the divorce papers. Is a part-time worker who seemed to want to say something to me then stopped me. She took me to the restroom and conveyed what she had wanted to tell me the other day. I asked the part-time worker if the girl's name was Mary. I waited for Mary with mixed feelings. Soon, Mary, a girl with a cute face, came alone. She told me that my husband had threatened her by saying, I won't cut your part-time contract if you get along with me. He also told her to exchange contact information, and she reluctantly did so, after which she started receiving messages from him at all hours. What was even more frightening was that on Mary's days off, he would come near her house and tell her to come out. She thought this was scary if true, and showed me all the content of the messages as evidence. I understood that what Mary was saying was true, and I told her that I had heard from my husband that he was dating Mary, and that wasn't the cause, but I would be submitting the divorce papers afterwards. Mary said she wished she had told me about this sooner, but I told her not to worry about it, as this divorce was inevitable. For some reason, we hit it off and exchanged contact information, and then left the restroom. I then looked around the store for my husband. However, I couldn't find him, so I went around to the employee entrance and decided to have him called from the office. My husband approached me with a grin and said to me, So, you've come to your senses? You can't support two kids on a part-timer's salary. With no sympathy left for my husband, I coldly retorted, I can't do it anymore. Let's get a divorce. He looked surprised and asked, Are you sure? I am? Oh wait, then you raise the kids on your own. I replied, you do know I work as a social worker, right? I work part-time with reduced hours, but my income is higher than yours, so don't worry. I replied, you do know I work as a social worker, right? I work part-time with reduced hours, but my income is higher than yours, so don't worry. He seemed surprised. Then I said, I'm going to submit the divorce papers. Goodbye, and headed to the county clerk's office. After submitting the divorce papers, I felt a strange sense of relief, and I couldn't wait to see my children. As I was walking home, I heard a voice from behind me. I turned around to see the department head's wife waving and approaching me. You seem cheerful. Something good happened? She asked. Well, it's a bit of a long story. I started, and she kindly suggested we go to a cafe to talk. I was hoping to see my children, but I also thought it best to inform her of my divorce, so we went to the cafe together. I told my parents, I'll be late. I have some things to discuss with the department head's wife before settling down at the cafe. I also informed her about my divorce and the reasons behind it. She seemed surprised to hear this. According to her, the department head is quite helpless outside of work. He's clumsy to the point that even when he tries to help with housework, it ends up creating more work for her. For instance, he would break dishes while washing them because his hands would slip with the soap. He would hang the laundry without straightening the wrinkles, and he almost caused a fire by overheating the pan while cooking. So she told him, just focus on your work. Every time you do something, it just adds to my workload. The reality was that the department head wanted to help with the cores, but she had forbidden him from doing so. When I asked if their child admired the department head because he became a manager at a young age and was therefore respected, she said, that must be it. He doesn't have to do anything at home. My husband is a complete goof outside of work. That's what makes him adorable. She smiled happily as she said this. I realized then that the department head wasn't a tyrant at home, but rather a cute husband who was led by the nose by his wife. They seemed like a pleasant family. I also discussed my concerns about what Mary was going through with my husband. I spoke to the department head's wife about Mary without her permission, considering Mary's safety. I knew that her father was an executive at the supermarket where my husband worked. I was certain that her husband, who was eager for promotion, would succumb to pressure from above. The department head's wife said that if this was true, it would be a violation of company policy and needed to be investigated, so we ended the conversation there. Before we parted, she said to me, you and your children have the right to happiness. If anything happens, let me know, and we exchanged contact information. When I hurried home, the house was already empty. As we finished preparing for the move, let's go to our new house, he said, and we got into the car and headed to our new home. My aunt's employees had helped, 
and my mother had decided where to place the furniture, so we were ready to start our new life right away. What surprised me more was the size of the living room and the number of rooms. Each of our children now had their own room. There was also a room for my parents to stay when they visited. I thanked my aunt and uncle for renting us this place at such a low rent. That night, we celebrated the divorce and the move with those who had helped us. Three days later, I got a nasty call from my ex-husband, which I of course ignored. I only read the one message he sent on WhatsApp, but I didn't respond. He was surprised to find that all the furniture was gone and only his belongings were left in the room and demanded the furniture back. Most of the furniture was something I bought when I was single, so I just overlooked it. I got a call from the department head's wife as well. She told me that the d department head had given my ex-husband a stern talking to. Apparently, he was left in a state of shock. His face pale after being told to live in regret for the rest of his life because there was no turning back. Mary and her parents went to the headquarters compliance department, explained what had been done to her by my ex-husband with evidence from their WhatsApp messages, and submitted call recordings as new evidence. It seemed that this was suggested by the department head's wife to Mary. When my ex-husband found out that the damage report had been reported to the headquarters, he said, I'm not stalking her. For dating. However, he was told by the folks at the headquarters that having a romantic relationship with a part-time employee while you have a wife is also a violation of compliance. He was shocked into silence. Then, the headquarters representative showed the evidence submitted by Mary, and upon realizing that he had really been causing trouble, that there had been no relationship, and that it was all a misunderstanding, the ex-husband broke down in tears. There had been no relationship, and it was all a misunderstanding. My ex husband broke down in tears. In the end, it seems he was given a notice of dismissal from the company and was set to be transferred as a regular employee to the branch in Alaska. After that, it seems my ex-husband went to report our divorce and demotion to his in-laws. The in-laws were angry about the cause of the divorce and the fact that they would never see their grandchildren again. They kicked him out of the house. I received an apology and report from my in-laws about this. I also received an apology from my in-laws, and they promised to make sure he paid his child support properly, every day. I get messages from my ex-husband saying he wants to start over, but I'm thinking about blocking him soon. My children don't mention their father at all. Just on the contrary, they seem to be living happily, being pampered by their aunt and uncle. I'm done with marriage. From now on, I want to protect my children's smiles and happiness at all costs. I'm divorcing you, you fool. My husband shouted over the phone just as I had returned from a business trip. I put up with you so much until now, but I've reached my breaking point. If you don't want a divorce, apologize now. Beeper stand. Yeah, I got it. But instead of heading to where my husband was and my in-law's place, I went somewhere else. My name is Sophie, 28 years old. I married my husband, David, who is two years my senior. Three years ago, to put it bluntly, my husband is the son of my company's future CEO. I originally worked for a different company, but after marrying David, I changed jobs. Since then, I've been working hard as an employee at my husband's company, preparing to become the next CEO's wife. He hesitated about me working at the same company, but there was no arguing with an order from the current CEO, his father. My work is demanding, and long business trips are the norm. We've been waiting to have a child, but the environment is just not relaxed enough to allow for a leisurely pregnancy. Lately, the relationship with my husband has been less than stellar. In fact, it's been deteriorating. I did wake you up several times. Today, Hex burst deep for him. You yelled at me not to disturb you and that you'd wake up on your own. So I just went and prepared breakfast. What? I never said anything like that. I'm not lying. I tried to wake you up at least 20 times, and your alarm was blaring the whole time. Can't you imagine what's gonna happen if I'm late today? I'll get chewed out by my dad again. Why do I have to be the one who gets yelled at when it's his fault for not waking up? I initially tolerated my husband's irrational scolding, but I finally began to push back. Because of this, we had a huge fight recently where he declared, I want a divorce. Since our in-laws intervened, we were saved from such a major incident. And for the last, I was increasingly getting fed up with him, throwing around the word divorce at every little issue. One day, while I was preparing for a business trip, my husband approached me with a sullen expression. Hey Sophie, you're off on another trip, huh? 
Seemingly dissatisfied with my frequent business trips, my husband always derides them as trips. I responded exasperated, it's not a trip, it's a business trip. Why do you keep making me repeat the same thing? Must be nice always going on trips and neglecting the housework. You're probably just going sightseeing after pushing all the house chores on me, right? Listen, that's enough. This is for your company, you know. What the hell is wrong with you? Can't you tell the difference between a trip and a business trip? Well, it's the truth, isn't it? You say I'm dumping the house scores on you, but you've never done anything around the house when I'm away on a business trip. When I'm not around, my husband only ever orders takeout, leaves the laundry piled up, and doesn't even take out the garbage. Despite doing nothing, his attitude gives me so much stress. Even the divorce drama last time was all because of his personality. Even though we both work and spend the same amount of time on our jobs, all the housework is left to me. On top of that, he acts all superior and domineering, which I couldn't stand. Trying to discuss it with him is pointless, as he never admits to any fault on his part. For heaven's sake, the future CEO's wife shouldn't be casually taking business trips. If you're not firm like me, the other employees will walk all over you. Exactly, because I'm becoming the future CEO's wife, right? I have to learn the job, and I need to meet with various clients. That's why I'm working so hard like this. First of all, we can live this good life because I'm the son of the CEO, right? You should listen to me more since it's thanks to me. What is talking about? The company is doing well because of the employees who work, isn't it? Instead of acting high and mighty just because you're the CEO's son, you should work harder. To such words, my husband's face turned beet red and shouted, What did you say? Extra these people, Superium. I heard other employees gossiping, you know. They said you always push overtime and bothersome tasks onto others and constantly complain. What in teachers? Who said that? I'll fire them on the spot. How can you not see that you're the one at fault? How can you not understand that you're sullying your father's name? My husband's eyes widened in anger and he roughly pulled my bangs. Don't get too full of yourself. After all, who do you think got you this job at this company? Bruh. Much? Let go. You're able to work at this prestigious company because you married me, got it? To refuse the business trip, I won't allow you to neglect the home for a business trip. I've said it many times. It can't be helped since it's for work. Shut up. Don't talk back. You married me, so you should just quietly listen to what I say. If this argument continues, it might lead to another divorce scare. I forcibly drove my ranting husband out of the room and prepared for my business trip. When I return, I'll have to take care of a week's worth of housework piled up by my husband. I bet the floor will be littered with clothes again, and the trash won't be taken out, like that thought. I felt tired even before the business trip. The next day, as planned, I went on the business trip. I performed my duties diligently, without mixing personal feelings into my work. When I returned home after a week, the scene I couldn't believe was spread out before me. As far as the eye could see, the house was spotless, not a speck of dust in sight. It hadn't changed much since the day I left for my business trip. Thank goodness, finally. David seemed to have understood my feelings. He must have had a change of heart and worked hard on the housework. Just as I started to feel relieved that my husband was finally cooperating, I found the completed divorce papers on the table. Next to it was a note saying, I'm going back to my parents' place. Lex, we're getting a divorce. Mark in a panic. I quickly called my husband and he answered promptly, Hey, did you read the divorce papers? Bumblebee credits. His nonchalant tone provoked me and I fired back. Wait, are you serious about getting a divorce? Obviously. I mean, you'd be in trouble if I divorced you, right? Oh, why, why? Don't just casually talk about divorce. Then my husband said with a smug tone, if you're going to go that far and begin to set out conditions, if you don't neglect the housework and listen to what I say, I might consider withdrawing the divorce. But of course, no more trips. What? I told you it wasn't a trip. Hey, are you talking back? If so, I'm divorcing you. You're such a nag. X actually, a nag, he says? He can't do a single thing around the house himself. If he's up for it, so am I. Got it. If you don't want to be divorced, come and apologize now. Each past that says understand. Holding back my urge to yell back. I replied calmly. Okay, I understand. You should have done what I told you from the start. Now come quickly. With that, he hung up the phone. Instead of heading to my in-law's house where my husband was, I left the house to go to the city hall. Of course, to submit the divorce papers, they were accepted without a fuss, and I was officially single again. Three hours later, 
While packing up at home, my ex-husband came back with his mother, probably impatient with my no-show. As soon as they saw me, they started hurling insults. Hey, how long are you going to keep me waiting? That's right. You're a failure as a wife, yet you're out having fun. You should be looking after David. Looking after? How old is David? He's older than me, isn't he? As I retorted, their brows furrowed in anger. Show up. Stop being stubborn and apologize quickly. We'll really get a divorce. You're the one who'll be in trouble if we get divorced. Sophie, you could have been the wife of the next company president, and you're okay with that attitude? Uh, and... Ain't you, ha? Huh? If you divorce me, you won't be able to live this lavish lifestyle. Are you okay with that? Will, I didn't think you were a good match for David in the first place, so I don't really care the low. At my loss for words, my ex-husband showed a devilish grin. Got it. This is your last chance. If you don't apologize now, we're getting a divorce. I'll kick you out of the company too. At that moment, anger surged through me like a fireball. I had to let him know who didn't understand the situation he was in. We're already divorced, you know. What? Just as you wished. I've already submitted the divorce papers, and they've been accepted. I'm from Enexion. I'm no longer your wife. Did Enexion? Her ex-husband and mother-in-law just stood their mouths agape. After a moment of silence, he finally found his voice. What are you talking about? This is a joke, right? There's no way you'd... Why would I lie? If you don't believe me, why don't you check the records yourself? In no way. Suddenly, the mother-in-law, who had been listening, started to shout, Deba, wait. Sophia, what have you done? You've put a divorce on David's record. Our future CEO. It was your son who handed me the divorce papers first. All I did was submit them. Stop making excuses. Cancel divorce immediately? Do you understand? I'm sorry, but once divorce papers have been accepted, they can't be canceled. Besides, I've no intention of canceling. Debbie, you ain't support, sisters? The mother-in-law was at a loss for words, and the ex-husband just hung his head. Ignoring those two, I spat. I've had enough of being ridiculed every time I go on a business trip, having to balance work and housework every day. As far as I'm concerned, you're nothing more than a burden. As far as I'm concerned, you're nothing more than a burden. Calm down. I'm perfectly calm. What's the point of being married if it's only a name? All you care about is yourself, isn't it? I didn't mean it like that. You do realize you're losing your place as the CEO's wife, right? Are you okay with that? I didn't transfer to your company because I wanted to become the CEO's wife. I don't know how much you've been pampered, but I didn't marry you to take care of you. Are you really ready to give up this lifestyle? If you'd just be patient a little longer, you'd be the CEO's wife. I absolutely refuse to continue being your caretaker. I'm not your mother. Just go live your life on your own. With an intensity like never before, my husband was completely teary-eyed. The mother-in-law took her turn, stuttering out her final provocation. Do you understand what you're doing? What exactly? If you divorce David, you're also losing your job. And so what? I've already informed your father that I'll be quitting the company. The mother-in-law and ex-husband's eyes widened in surprise. To confirm the truth, the ex-husband started calling his father. After a few rings, his father answered, and he put the call on speaker. Dad, listen to this. Sophie went and decided to divorce me on her own. Ache, real, I heard. I had heard. To tell me she's getting the company, too. She's so selfish. Can't you fire her immediately with your CEO powers? Well, you can't do join. I guess I should fire someone ASAP. You? Yeah, that's right. We, what? Fiction in place of the dumbstruck ex-husband. His mother-in-law confronted her husband. What do you mean by that? That's in chip lying. David is a nuisance who contributes nothing to the company. I'm disappointed in your work ethic. Wait, what? How can you suddenly say this about our son? Keep quiet. The father-in-law strongly rebuked his wife. The endeavor, your work performance is poor. Use the company's supplies without permission. You casually make advances to female employees. You complain about the company cafeteria. There's no good at Spider Fry guy. Do you think you don't know that you're being called incompetent by your subordinates? Why your highs at Bakai's then? Then out to CEM, it's not true. It can't be. I can't have her for you any longer. Even you are my son. <laughs> Be so 
Listen this way! Being the boss's son doesn't make the company a sweet ride! But that doesn't mean you have to fire me. The only thing I can commend you for is marrying a capable wife. Sophie will continue to work for the company, but you're fired. Course you ain't any further to try it. Cutted! I'm her sister! At his father-in-law's words, the ex-husband's eyes widened in shock. And phased by his reaction, the father-in-law continued, Unlike you, for such spastation, Sophie is meticulous in her work and brings in a lot of contracts. Shareg is highly regarded by her clients, slashing row. She's high regarded by our clients. There are many companies that have contracted with us because of her. Don't be, don't be ridiculous. We should tell Fisa of her abuse so we sent her on more business trips. You were making fun of her, calling it vacation or something, weren't you? Act no. I didn't. I may tell you there's no home for you to return to until you become independent. Come back to this house! Got it! No way. And so the ex-husband was disowned by his father-in-law, lost his job, and couldn't even return to his parents' home. And his mother tried to protect her son. His father told his wife, It's because you spoil him. And was also given a divorce notice. The two of them used up their savings to start living in an apartment, but they have been unable to find work, and their unemployment continues. I still get messages from my ex-husband. Sophie, I was wrong. I won't make fun of you anymore. I promise to take care of myself, so please come back. I can't take it anymore. Help me. He was so persistent that I finally blocked his number. I shouldn't have to deal with that mama's boy anymore. On the other hand, I'm still working hard under my father-in-law, who is the CEO. Now, I have my own subordinates, and I'm spending fulfilling days. It's really good that my father-in-law is an understanding manager. From no one. I want to strive towards my goals without being trapped in meaningless family relationships. The son ordered then result. I should have been brimming with happiness, finally owning the home of my dreams. But instead, I dread every upcoming weekend. Why? Because my husband's parents visit every single week and I'm treated like a maid every time. Die. Because my husband's parents visit every single week and I'm treated like a maid every time. Far from getting a break from the stress of work, I only grow more exhausted with each day off. I reached my limit and decided to invite my own parents over, hoping that it would deter my in-laws from visiting. But my husband lashed out at me, bellowing, don't you dare invite your parents. If you don't like to live here, you can get out. Well, fine. I'll leave. He'll be the one to regret it. My name is Emma. I've been married to Michael for five years. We were previously living in a rental, so we've been planning to buy our own house soon. Michael's parents got wind of this. Though, Emma, Michael told us about your plans. You're finally buying your own house, huh? Yes, that's right. If you need any help looking for places, just let us know. We're more than happy to help. Oh, thank you. How about visiting some open houses soon? I had plans on carefully selecting our new home with Michael, but my mother-in-law seems keen on being involved with every step of the property search. Just yesterday, she showed up unannounced with a brochure for a plot of land that's up for sale. Emma, what do you think about this property? It's near the subway station, and it's spacious enough for a duplex house. A duplex house? Apparently, they're planning on moving in with us. That's why they've been sticking their noses in our property search. She's been constantly chiming in with suggestions like it would be better to live nearby the subway since it's a hassle to walk or it would be convenient to have a supermarket nearby. And here I thought she was just looking out for us, but all along she was just stating her own preferences, thinking that she'd be living there too. I immediately relayed this to Michael. Michael, your mother came over this afternoon with a brochure for a plot of land that's for sale. It seems like she and your father want to live with us. Ah, yeah, she did mention something like that. Wait, you heard it from your mom? Why did Noi didn't you tell me such an important thing? I thought we could talk about it once it was more concrete. Do you object? The mom. Well, yes, because I was thinking that we'd be leaving you and me. And besides, your mom and dad are still healthy, aren't they? I can't predict far into the future, but I think right now it would be best if we lived separately to maintain a good relationship. I see. I understand how you feel. The mom. 
Michael listened to my feelings and was able to convince his parents that we're not planning to live together right now. After hearing Michael's reasoning, it seems his parents finally gave in. I thanked him again for handling the situation so well. Thank you. Michael, the problem? If you're against living with them, then it won't force it. Instead, let's have my folks visit our new home often after we move in. Of course. After that, Michael and I found the perfect place, and we are finally able to get our own home. Once we moved in, his parents came to visit our new home right away. Emma, congratulations on the move. What a nice house you have. It seemed that his mother was satisfied with our new home. Please feel free to visit any time. I told her this with a gentle feeling, and that day, the four of us shared a meal around the dinner table the following weekend. I suggested to Michael that we should go buy some decorations for the living room, but he seemed disappointed and told me. The following weekend. I suggested to Michael that we go buy some decorations for the living room, but he seemed disappointed and told me, uh, can we postpone the shopping for another time? Do you have plans for the weekend? My folks said they wanted to come over. What? They just visited last week. Well, they seem to really like this house. You did say, feel free to visit any time, right? The mess? Well, yes. I did say that, but... Could you make dinner and entertain them a bit? After that, his parents started to visit our house every single week, and every time they visited, they became increasingly demanding. They would come over early in the morning, boss me around, not help any household chores, and then leave. From the second visit onwards, they would even assume that it was okay to stay over. The demands of my in-laws kept escalating, just between taking care of them. I barely had a chance to rest on weekends due to work fatigue, leaving me even more exhausted. I reached my breaking point and sincerely pleaded to my husband, Michael, Michael, I really want your mom and dad to stop staying over at our place every weekend. We can't help it. They say they want to come. Well, you could just refuse them. Between working on weekdays and caring for your parents from morning till night on weekends, I've no time to rest. Think about it. If we were living with them, it'd be every day, not just the weekends. Your in-laws originally wanted to live with us, but because you were strongly against it, we prioritized your opinion and they gave up on moving in. But compared to living together, it might still be better. However, it was becoming unbearable to have this situation continue indefinitely. Well, I was troubled about what to do. I received a call from my mother. I told my mother that I had been troubled by my mother-in-law's frequent visits since moving. Upon hearing this, my mother sounded concerned and said, that must be tough. I imagine you would be busily settling in after moving and buying necessary items, so I've been refraining from contacting you because my in-laws visit every weekend. I still hadn't invited my own mother to our new house. If I invite my mother, maybe my in-laws would refrain from coming over that weekend. That evening, I suggested this to Michael when he came home from work. Okay, Michael, I want to invite my parents over this weekend. Is that okay? No way. My parents already planned to come over this weekend. But your parents have come over so many times already. My parents haven't been over even once. That's because your parents haven't said they want to come. My mother has been considerate, waiting for us to settle down. She really wants to come. Oh, really? Well, then invite your parents over when mine aren't coming. They've waited this long. They can wait a bit longer. Don't you think it's strange to always prioritize your parents who are always over here? Can your parents refrain next week? You're my wife now. It's only natural that we prioritize my parents. Anyway, tell your parents that this weekend is not good. I don't want to do that. You should just not invite your parents. If I can't call my parents because of that, then your parents don't have to come to my house anymore either. Since they've given you to me, they are prepared not to be able to see your daughter, right? Wait a minute. That's absurd. Why can't I invite my parents? Regardless of having a married daughter, isn't it natural for them to want to see their family? Despite Michael's stubborn refusal, I made this proposition to him. Okay, let's give up on this weekend. But from now on, let's try to invite each other's parents on a more regular basis. Okay? Yes, that's exactly what I was trying to avoid. If you're going to suggest something that troublesome, we might as well not invite your parents at all. Let's end this conversation. It looks sexualations. We haven't resolved anything yet. In my mind, I've already decided. I'm not going to let your parents come over. If you don't like it, you can leave. No matter what I said, Michael only thought about his parents. He never considered me nor my parents. 
His refusal to have a conversation and his insistence on his own opinions finally wore out my patience. Fine, if you feel that strongly. Michael, I like believe. And it'll be too late for regrets. Regrets? Hello. What on earth would I regret if you're gone? Just remember this. I won't recognize any apologies. Don't come crawling back wanting to return. Being loudly laughing Michael behind. I headed home. When I told my parents what had happened, they agreed with me that Michael's opinion was unreasonable. My father was particularly angry. Those were his words to me. I knew I wasn't wrong. I was feeling relieved. I made up my mind to pursue a divorce. A few months after leaving the house, I received a call from Michael. Hey, how much longer do you plan not to return? Have you ever forgotten what day it is this Saturday? He appealed to me in a panicked tone. Oh, right. It was the day we were supposed to invite your co-workers over to our new house. We've been planning it since we moved, remember? But won't your mail be coming that day? What did you tell your co-workers that my parents are visiting and refuse them? There's no way I can say that. Moreover, I've invited a new boss from my department that day. If I cancel now, it could affect my future at work. I don't care. You're the one who kicked me out, remember? Is this the time to be arguing? Stop sulking and come back already. We need to start preparing for everyone's arrival, or we won't make it in time. I'm not returning to that house. What? Are you okay with jeopardizing my job? I don't mind. I plan on leaving you. An ace. Leaving? Are you serious? Yes. I've been thinking about it since I left the house. My parents also agree with me. Your parents, too? They're just as out of touch as you. Do what you want. I'll have my parents help with the preparation for inviting my coworkers. I don't need you anymore. You're going to regret this. Do what you want. I'll have my parents help with the preparation for inviting my coworkers. That's my line. Goodbye. I hung up the phone abruptly. Right about now. Michael is probably frantically contacting his in-laws, preparing to invite colleagues from the office. Since his in-laws have done as they please so far, it would be good for them to taste some hardship for once. Then, during the problematic weekend, our home phone rang in the afternoon. When I picked it up, Michael, with a flustered voice, said, Uh, why is Emma answering the phone? I was calling my new boss's home. Why? Well, because it's my house, of course. Emma's house? Don't tell me the new boss is... Emma's father? Yes, my father used to work at Michael's company. He had been away from the main office for a few years as an advisor because a related company was launching a new business. But it was decided that he would return to the main office next month and become Michael's boss. I knew, of course, but I couldn't leak the internal announcement until the information embargo was lifted, and I kept silent even from Michael, my husband. I thought he would notice when he saw the boss's name in the internal announcement, but it seems he didn't check properly. My mother has prepared expensive ingredients and good alcohol, but no one is coming. When I contacted my colleagues, they said there was a big fuss at the company because I refused to invite the new boss to my house. If the boss doesn't come, no one else will, they started saying, Emma, please convince your father to come to our house. Please persuade him to clear up everyone's misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? It's not a misunderstanding. It's a fact, right? Michael, you said, don't ever invite my parents to our housey, didn't you? I didn't know your father was my boss then. Quite a convenient excuse. I've asked you many times if you wouldn't regret it, haven't I? Irresponsible for cleaning up your own mess. I hung up the phone without waiting for Michael's response. I told my father about the phone call from him. But, of course, my father had no intention of going to that house. There's no need to go to the house of a man who disregards his important daughter and her family. My father was even more incensed. My father is scary when he gets angry. He was excited to buy expensive ingredients and alcohol for today, but I guess all their spending ended up being for nothing. The next day, Michael came to our house with a pale face. Dima, I'm sorry for everything I've done until now. Let's start over again. Please come back home. My father, instead of me, who was looking at him with a dumbfounded face, responded, Start over? Do you then understand what you've done? Oh, you're saying? I take. I apologize for my actions. You've ignored my daughter for months now, yet you've never once bothered to visit her. I didn't think you'd turn out to be so untrustworthy. No, that's not it. I've been busy at work. You're not so busy you have to work on the weekends, or so I've heard. St weekends? Michael stammered. Likely, his mother was visiting him every weekend. Michael, who never did housework, would have given up if it weren't for her help. 
I'm sure his mother was also looking after him during the weekdays, taking advantage of my absence. My father, guessing this, sternly said, Never mind. You seem to get along quite well with your parents. It seems like you two jumped into marriage before you were ready to be independent. That's not true. I respect Emma's feelings and even rejected the idea of living with my parents. You're still saying that? It's natural for a couple to decide whether to live with their parents. Yet you kept harping on Emma for rejecting the idea and never listened to her after. How is that prioritizing Emma's feelings? Well, Tech. And marriage means both families become relatives. Yet you invited your parents to your home every weekend and told us, absolutely don't come over. How dare you disregard Emma's family, us? I didn't know you were going to be my boss. If I'd known that, I would have invited you first before my parents. That's exactly what I mean when I say you're self-centered. You don't get it at all. People like you shouldn't be in a leadership position. My department doesn't need someone as selfish as you. But, but sir, silence, get out of my house now. I'll ever show your face here again. Afterward, my father advised his superiors to remove Michael from his department and reassign him to a regional branch. No one defended Michael, who was already known for his selfish behavior. Even his parents, who doted on him, couldn't follow him to a remote region. Now, they can see him only once a year, if at all. Meanwhile, I've been living comfortably at my parents' house after finalizing my divorce with Michael and focusing on my work. I work hard on weekdays and spend weekends with the people who I love. When I think back to my past lifestyle when I was not able to live such a normal life, the free life I have now is comfortable and irresistible. From now on, I want to cherish my parents and live at my own pace. I shouldn't have married an old hag like you. Younger women are definitely better. I can't even walk with you in public. You're so embarrassing. If I could, I'd go back in time and start my life over. These were the words spoken to me by my ex-husband, um, 10 years ago. My name is Elizabeth, 48 years old. I married Tom, who was 5 years younger than me, when I was 33. I was a nurse, and we met at the hospital where I worked. Tom came to tame to the hospital as a new doctor. He had just finished his residency, and he asked me about various things. I found his innocence endearing and couldn't help but support him. But I was a nurse, and he was a doctor, not to mention I was five years older, so I didn't think of dating. Still, he talked to me almost every day, and I couldn't ignore him. We eventually started dating naturally. I was a bit concerned about our age difference, but he didn't seem to care at all, so I stopped worrying too. We got married after two years of dating. But after five years of marriage, he started to verbally abuse me daily, saying he should have married a younger woman. He would chat with young nurses at the hospital in an exaggeratedly cheerful manner, but I tried to ignore it because it was a workplace. I didn't want to make a scene there, as it would only make me feel miserable. That's one day. Tom's cheating was caught. The other person was a former patient, but I had never met her because I was working in a different department. She was a woman 10 years younger than me. With an old lady like you, it's no wonder we couldn't have heads. My girlfriend is carrying my child. They nay. Tom laughed as if cheating were natural. I couldn't bear the thought of being with such a man any longer, so I agreed to the divorce. Of course. I told Tom and his girlfriend that I would be seeking alimony. This made Tom furious, like a raging fire. I was married to an old hag like you for five years. And you want alimony? I should be the one getting paid. Who would pay you anything? He ranted with more force than I expected. It seemed he never thought he'd be asked to pay alimony after having an affair. I even received a call from Tom's father, who seemed completely unconcerned with his son's wrongdoing, saying that it's natural for a young man to be attracted to a young woman. I was appalled. Tom insisted that he would never pay, so I had no choice but to consult a lawyer. I couldn't back down quietly after all the horrible things he said and his affair. The lawyer told me that demanding alimony was my right, and I left everything to them. I often heard that getting a divorce is more difficult than getting married, and I truly felt that way. Thanks to the lawyer, I was able to receive the proper alimony, terminate the lease on the apartment we shared, and start living alone. I changed my last name from Evans back to my maiden name, Breton. The only silver lining was that Tom had switched to another hospital. I wouldn't want to be in a hospital with a green old hag like you. He said as a parting shot. 
He must have thought that divorcing, because of his infidelity and marrying his mistress right away, would inevitably cause resentment among others. But I was impressed by how well prepared he was, having already found a new workplace. However, you can't keep people from talking. I couldn't help but hear the whispers about how I was dumped by my younger husband, and it felt like everyone was looking at me that way. Eventually, I became paranoid that someone was always spreading rumors about me, and it took a toll on me mentally. In the end, I also quit the hospital. I spent some time aimlessly, but since I love working and being active, I decided to look for a new job. Fortunately, I found a small maternity clinic just two stops away from my current residence that was hiring nurses, and I was hired on the spot. It was a small hospital with a minimal number of doctors and nurses, but it was a comfortable workplace where everyone got along with the patients. Miss Britton, you're very observant and well-liked by the patients. Except to your collections, we're lucky to have you. Thank you. But my peaceful days didn't last long. A pregnant woman who had been referred from another hospital arrived, and when I heard her name, I thought, oh, Sarah Evans, the same name as Tom's mistress. I checked to see if it was a coincidence. Her husband's name was Tom Evans, a doctor no doubt, my ex-husband. Tom's hospital didn't have an obstetrics department, and they had recently moved nearby and were referred to this hospital. I had changed back to my maiden name after the divorce, and we had never met face to face. She didn't seem to recognize me either, but I never imagined I'd run into them here. I hesitated to tell anyone that she was my ex-husband's mistress, so I kept quiet for a few days. Then, one day, Tom came with his wife for her checkup. Thud. Tom's eyes widened when he saw me. He must not have expected me to be here. I didn't want to meet him here either. At Tom's words, his wife seemed to realize who I was. Wait, is she? Did you come to this hospital just to harass us? Of course not. I was here first. There's no way I could have known that Tom's new residence was near this hospital. But Tom wouldn't listen to my side of the story and accused me of following them around. You're stalking me to harass me, aren't you? Don't be ridiculous. Why would I do that? You're a greedy woman who squeezed money out of me after being dumped because you're old. Who knows what you'll do? He shouted this in the examination room and everyone found out about our relationship. Everyone's stares felt piercing and even though I thought Tom was in the wrong, I felt uncomfortable. Oh, I'm scared. I felt like I've been looked at maliciously ever since I came here. What if something happens to my baby? His wife added insult to injury by saying this with fake tears in her eyes. I don't know what she's capable of, so please don't let her get close to my wife. Tom said firmly. The doctor in charge then urged me to leave the examination room. It probably wasn't that they suspected me, but the only way to defuse the situation was to have me step out. I understand that patients come first, and I didn't want to be there either, but I felt really miserable. I started to feel uncomfortable with people around me as I didn't want the details of my divorce to be known. Planned to make matters worse, Tom's wife continued to come to the hospital and badmouth me every time she came. Although everyone knew I wasn't in the wrong, the other person was a patient. Moreover, she was pregnant and needed to be taken care of. As a result, my comfort in being there only worsened. There was still more than six months until her due date, and I couldn't bear the thought of spending all that time in this kind of atmosphere. Even though it was a good workplace, I submitted my resignation to the hospital. It's a shame, but there's nothing we can do said the director, whose face seemed somewhat relieved. I felt like I was being punished, even though I hadn't done anything wrong. Exhausted by everything, I couldn't bring myself to look for a new hospital to work at and return to my parents' rural home. They welcomed me without saying anything. At first, I couldn't bring myself to do anything, but I felt guilty for just staying at home every day. So I decided to take part-time job at a nearby supermarket. It was my first time working outside of a hospital, but it was refreshing and a nice change of pace. I loved being a nurse, and I felt a sense of fulfillment in it, but it was a workplace where I was responsible for people's lives, and the weight of that responsibility was immense. There wasn't a single day when I could let my guard down. Being away from that life was emotionally uplifting. Three years after returning home, I was offered a full-time position at the supermarket. It seemed my hard work was recognized, and I was genuinely happy to accept the offer. Four years later, a matchmaker approached me. Are you interested in giving an arranged marriage a try? Excuse me, I've just the right person for you. The person who brought this up was the store manager. Joy at 45, I had no intention of remarrying, so I politely declined, but the manager was persistent. 
The other person was a 47-year-old divorcee like me, with a similar reason for the divorce, a cheating spouse. It had happened 20 years ago. In the end, I couldn't refuse, and we agreed to meet. Given our ages, we decided to meet directly without involving any intermediaries. When I arrived at the designated restaurant, my counterpart was already there. As I entered the room, he suddenly stood up and bowed deeply. As I entered the room, he suddenly stood up and bowed deeply, accidentally bumping his forehead against the table. Ouch! It's Christmas, Lord Liar Bear. He raised his face, which was completely red. I couldn't help but laugh, thinking that such a thing would happen these days. Hi, I'm James, which me easy. Thank you for coming to the show. This... Ah, nice to meet you. I'm Elizabeth. Thanks to the initial accident, it didn't take long for us to get comfortable with each other. As I listened to his story, it turns out this arranged mean happened because he fell in love with me at first sight when he came to our supermarket while on a business trip. He asked for this meeting to be arranged. It seems his college senior is actually the manager of the main store. I'd like to have a serious relationship, if possible. Uh, Aisha. Shush! I came with the intention of refusing, but in the end, I couldn't say those words and instead, I found myself wanting to see him again. And so after dating for half a year, we decided to get married. Both my parents really liked his personality and were genuinely happy for us. Living with my husband, who always thinks of me, was truly a blessing. Since we were both of a certain age, we never wanted children from the start. We just hoped to live a peaceful life together, hand in hand. But when I turned 48, my health began to deteriorate. When I went to the hospital for a checkup, it turned out that I wasn't just sick, but pregnant. I never imagined that I would get pregnant at this age, and I didn't think my illness was morning sickness. I think my husband felt the same way. It seems like there's a baby. I said that I said that. My husband naturally replied, That's great. Bray? Oh, who's the lucky one? Yeah, I think you know them very well. I'm there right in front of you. What? Deck or fair inspection? I'm the one who's pregnant. In my words, my husband made a puzzled face and was silent for a while. I thought to myself, of course this would happen. He looked down at my belly. Oh, damn me to me! When I nodded, his eyes widened even more. I'm sure the news was so unexpected that his mind went into a panic. I mean, even I did. Oh, that means you're going to be mom and dad? And... Seems like it. Baby, read time. Wow, heard this on daring. Bro, with an uncharacteristic surprise in his voice, my husband hugged me. It's unbelievable. That's time. A miracle. A miracle. Is it okay for me to give birth? I never really considered not giving birth, but there's the issue of age... It's not like I'm not worried about what lies ahead. Bun at the hospital. I was asked, what do you want to do? I know very well that there are risks associated with giving birth at an older age for both the mother and child. I don't expect everyone around me to be supportive. I'm sure there will be people who will ask how old I will be when my child turns 20. I'm not without my fears about whether or not I can raise a child at this age. Still, I could never bring myself to end the life that has taken root within me. What are you talking about? How you... Of course, yes! So when my husband immediately responded that way, I was happy. I thought it was his genuine feeling. But after a while, he started to worry about my health. It's easy to imagine various negative effects, even for a man like my husband. We discussed it at length and decided to go ahead with the pregnancy after talking with our doctor. My parents and his parents were surprised and worried, but they were also very happy. That's how we decided to give birth at a well-equipped large hospital. The participating doctor was very compassionate and reassuring, and on the day of one of my checkups, not only the obstetrician, but also an internist was scheduled to be there, just in case. My husband was supposed to be there, but he had an unavoidable work commitment, so I went into the examination room alone. But to my surprise, my ex-husband, ex-Tom, was also there and... Honestly, I couldn't believe I would run into him in a place like this, Wait, wait, seriously? As a 48-year-old pregnant woman, hearing birth at that age is unbelievable, low. Tom burst out laughing. The obstetrician and the nurse in the room looked confused, but Tom didn't seem to care. You have no right to say that to me. I'm just worried about you, an old lady, getting pregnant. That's just gross, low.
Is that how you treat your patients? I can't believe you would say something so hurtful to a pregnant woman who's already anxious. Are you really a doctor? What are you acting so high and mighty for? Most of the patients at this hospital are wealthy, Wabbity Winnow. You know what you stand, Ma? You should leave before you embarrass yourself. Excuse me, Dr. Evans. To know I'll be leaving anyway. I wouldn't dream of giving birth at a hospital with a doctor like you. The Dr. Evans, that woman is the wife of the heir to the Miles Group, who has made significant donations to our hospital. Breast for no burst donation. Don't me, but she's my... I've no connection to you. Even so, what you just said is terrible. As Mrs. Miles pointed out, I can't believe a doctor would say something like that. Even so, what you just said was terrible. As Mrs. Miles pointed out. Just then, my husband arrived. Hi, I am late. This a keeper's... My wife has been a great help to you. He could clearly see that I was angry, and Tom was pale, sensing something was off. Is something wrong? I was just told by this man here, Dr. Evans, that giving birth at 48 is disgusting. Why? If you don't stand in. Upon hearing those words, my usually mild-mannered husband's expression changed instantly. And because I mentioned Dr. Evans, he probably realized this man was my ex-husband. I had talked about my previous marriage, and he knew Tom's name and occupation. Are you Dr. Evans? You insulted my wife, didn't you? As soon as my husband finished speaking, the nurse who had left earlier returned with the director. The rector, we came to this hospital because my father recommended it. But I can't believe a doctor like this is employed here. It seems we chose the wrong hospital. I heard there was some rudeness. Director, it came to this hospital because my father recommended it. But I can't believe a doctor like this is employed here. It seems we chose the wrong hospital. I'm terribly sorry. That's not true. This man is not our doctor. I just fired him. Wait, Director, what are you saying? I didn't know he was like this either. I only took him in because a friend asked me to... We don't, we don't need a doctor who spouts such abusive language. He won't appear before you again. Hearing the director's words, Tom, who was shouting, and no, I won't leave. I don't want to, was dragged out of the hallway by the obstetrician. The director apologized so profusely that we felt sorry for him, so we regained our composure and sat back down. A spent plane where my husband's anger didn't subside immediately. And he asked... Is it because my father has donated to this hospital that you fired him? If not, would you let a doctor like him roam free? The director shook his head in disbelief. Actually, it seems that Tom had only been at the hospital for a week. Tom's father was a classmate of the hospital director, and after a recent reunion, he had begged the director to hire his son. The director had never imagined he would be like this and genuinely apologized. It's not like all the doctors at this hospital are like Tom. In fact, our obstetrician is a very good doctor. If Tom wasn't here, I want to give birth here. And my husband agreed. My father-in-law is the president of a major company with branches across the country, donating part of their profits to medical and welfare facilities. He had donated a large sum to this hospital because my mother-in-law was treated here for a serious illness when she was young. So my father-in-law recommended this hospital for my childbirth. Since a few days later, Tom contacted us, begging us to talk to the director and rehire him. If you'd asked, they might reconsider, right? Apparently, he had often angered patients with his arrogant attitude and had been moving from hospital to hospital. I can't think of him as anything but a fool for making the same mistakes over and over. My ex-father-in-law had told him there would be no future for him if he got fired again. However, I can't help but think that my ex-father-in-law's leniency is what made Tom this way. When the call came, my husband was with me. He took the phone from me, yelled at Tom that if he ever contacted us again or came near me, he would report him to the police for harassment and Tom never called again, probably out of fear. Sometime later, on the way home from the hospital, we stopped by a convenience store and saw Tom working there. It seemed no other hospital would hire him anymore. He was crying and said his wife and child had left him, but I couldn't feel any sympathy. I just decided never to go to that convenience store again. The following year, I gave birth to a healthy baby girl. She's very adorable, no matter what happens. I'm determined to raise her with responsibility and care. But my husband has been smitten with our child since the moment she was born. 
He seems to be becoming a very indulgent father, so I have to be careful.